today we're going to be running through all of the major updates for Zoho inventory from Q2 2025. Uh, so with that, let's jump right on in. Um, so there was a lot that rolled out here for inventory last quarter. Um, I'm going to try to go relatively quickly through here, give you the high level on each of these. I will pause and focus in on a handful of them that I think are going to be the most impactful. Um, one of those impactful updates is definitely replenishments. Um, so replenishments are essentially a way to uh, create a record that essentially means you need to make a purchase for a particular item. So to get a little bit more granular on this, what really is a replenishment? It's basically a pre-purchase order record uh, that allows you to start listing some of the stock items that are below their uh, restocking point. Now, you might be thinking, why really would I need to do that? Well, when you're running an inventory business, one of the best things that you can do is kind of bulk or bundle purchases from vendors. Um, and historically, the way that you've had to do that is really by like creating filters of items or creating reports inside of Zoho Analytics. Um, replenishments essentially give you a native way to say, hey, when I hit a certain stock amount for an item, put it on my like to be purchased list, right? Then from there, I can very easily raise uh, purchase orders for each of my various vendors. Uh, and actually purchase those items in bulk. So you're saving on shipping, right? A lot of vendors are gonna give you some type of discount based on order volume. Um, so being able to actually just quickly and easily log everything into this replenishments list just gives me a much quicker and easier way to automatically create those purchase orders. Um, I do highlight this one because honestly, building a replenishment system from scratch is something we oftentimes do for clients, right? We'll essentially create that analytics data set and once we're above a certain order volume or a certain order amount for a given vendor, we'll automatically create that purchase order. And so this would either make that process easier or allow you to do it manually much more quickly. So really excited for these. Again, it's essentially going to automatically just create that pending replenishment once we're at the, you know, below that restocking level for given items. We've also made some updates here for the Etsy integration. So Etsy, of course, being an online e-commerce platform where you can list your items, uh, similar to like an eBay or an Amazon. Um, what they've done is a few things. So they're now going to sync products every 24 hours by default. They've got a manual sync option as well. Um, item groupings are actually now kind of managed well. So you know, item groups are like you've got a t-shirt in five different sizes. And you want to say, hey, these are all like the same product with just some type of variation to it. Uh, those are now going to actually sync as an item group into inventory. Uh, for those who use a lot of sales channels like Etsy, eBay, Amazon, you know that handling of item groups has always been a little bit funky. So I am happy to see some improvements happening there. They've also allowed uh, tax exemptions for items to work more smoothly. Stock updates are going to be rolling in. Uh, you can either enable or disable those. Um, you know, quantity capped at 999. Really, this is just a uh, preventing a bug, right? If you try to send a quantity of more than 999 to Etsy, it fails because that's the maximum stock it can have. So it's just going to kind of cut that off for you and make sure that things are syncing properly. So overall, nice round of updates here for your uh, Etsy integration if you are using that. Um, we also now have custom module access for customer and vendor portals. Uh, so a little while back, custom modules were added to Zoho Books and Inventory. Uh, that essentially gives you a place to store custom data objects that don't fit directly into the like product estimate, sales order, purchase order type of structure. Um, what you can do now is if you have custom modules and if you've linked those custom modules to either a customer or a vendor, you can actually choose to surface those inside of the portal. So when would you really use this? Well, we have clients where they have to manufacture some product on demand. So they get a sales order that gets placed and that triggers the creation of custom module records to represent the movement of those products from like a raw material into a finished good. Well, each of those like production cycles could easily be associated to a customer. And so now if I enable these in the portal, they can actually log in and see, hey, okay, they're expecting to be done on this date. It's on the shop floor right now. Everything's looking good. Uh, so ideally, just a way to reduce one email coming in asking about that type of information 
uh, that just could be surfaced in a client portal. We also now have multi-level approval support for inventory adjustments and transfer orders. So an inventory adjustment, of course, is a way to adjust the stock of one or multiple items up or down for a variety of different reasons. A transfer order is movement of a stock from one warehouse to another. Keep in mind, some people do also use warehouse to be like a retail location, a storage location, or like a truck if you, uh, you know, bring some consumables out on a daily route. So Historically, we've only been able to do like a one-step approval process. Um, now you can essentially do multi-step approvals. So if you want to get it approved by first the manager, then the admin or the finance team, you can set those up. Um, so just a higher level of control, um, especially I think around inventory adjustments. A transporter becomes pretty routine. It's like, hey, we're just moving it. Inventory adjustments make a lot of changes to like your accounting. So I could definitely see a scenario where like, Somebody goes out, they do some stock keeping, they submit an inventory adjustment, gets approved by their manager, and then routes to the finance team just to make sure everything was like logged correctly and isn't going to create accounting issues. Um, and then they can just make that final approval or any adjustments that they need to make uh, before approving. Now, handful of updates as well for imports and exports. So exporting composite items. Um, previously, we couldn't export more than 25,000 composite items. Uh, the reason these are trickier for Zoho is that you kind of have that parent-child relationship that needs to be taken into account. Um, in this new update, essentially, they're going to say, hey, if you have more than 25,000, you might have to wait a little bit. We're going to schedule that export, but we can do it for you, <laughs> right? So it's not just a hard block anymore. You've always been able to get around this by going through analytics, but anytime that we can avoid having to bolt on another app just to run like a routine export definitely makes life a little bit better. Before we keep going, I do want to ask if you're finding the video useful so far, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave me a comment with which one of these you're most excited to get a hands on in your account. And as always, head on over to Zonata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help on your Zoho installation. One nice one here, this seems minor, but it is kind of cool. Um, you've got various PDF templates inside of inventory. This would be like your estimate template, your quote template, your sales order, whatever it may be. Um, previously, they were either all active or they were deleted, right? But you don't always want to delete something. You might say like, hey, we're not going to use this one for now, but I might change my mind later. So now you can essentially make one inactive, which will mean it won't be available for selection inside of a given order, but you're not having to delete that entire thing. Really useful for situations where like maybe you're working on something right now and it's not done, right? But you still want to have it, right? Like I haven't finished this template yet, um, but I don't want anybody to use it, right? You can now just make it inactive. Really nice for like that ongoing, um, you know, change management side where you don't want people using the wrong thing on accident. Like I've seen a lot of people just put like in all caps, do not use in the name of the template, which is, you know, a decent way to handle it. But it's even better if it just doesn't show up at all. Uh, transfer order numbers can now be auto generated when you're importing. This is just kind of nice. So like previously, the way you had to do this was create a column inside of your import where you would create these numbers, right? But that's obviously not like the ideal scenario because it means that you have to like add another column, set up formula field, you know, do whatever you need to do. Now those are just gonna happen automatically if you so choose when you're importing a transfer order. Bin locations are now also gonna show up when you export invoices, just a minor one, but helping you make sure that you know where exactly a certain product came from that was billed out to a client. Um, now, a bit of a rapid fire round here. We have a bunch of enhancements to reports. Uh, so shipment details, this is a totally new report that essentially gives you a view of shipment orders. So you can look at what shipments have went out by date, filter on kind of advanced filters like products, customers. You can do some grouping and you can customize columns. Um, one of the most common pieces of feedback that we hear about books and inventory is that the uh, native suite of reports are not super robust. Um, our answer is always, hey, do it in analytics, but not everyone wants to, right? Like sometimes it's nice to just look at a standard report about shipments that are going out the door, right? So a lot of these are just like filling some of those gaps, right? That people have needed, but have never existed. Stock summary report. This one's always existed, but they've now added some new functionality. So you can essentially go in, create group buys, create filters, and then look at it at a more granular level. 
uh, sales summary. This is a new report that's going to give you a daily view, total invoices, sales receipts, amounts, tax amounts, how many items were sold, the quantities that have been moved. Uh, it also takes into account some credit notes, which are nice. So if certain orders were like refunded within that period, um, you're actually going to be able to see that. It's actually a piece of feedback we get a lot. You look at a sales report inside of inventory or books, and it's just invoices. And it's like, okay, cool, but like you'll have some percent of those that have a credit note associated where you'd want to decrease the sales accordingly. And it looks like this report is designed to solve that exact problem. A um, couple updates for the warehouse report that essentially lets you know like what types of items are in each warehouse. Um, so you now have some more customization options. So showing and hiding columns, dropping in filters, creating custom reports off of this, and exporting based on all of those filters. So just kind of a suite of improvements for that one. Last one up here, uh, kind of grouping is being added to a bunch of reports. So receivable summary and details, payable summary and details. You're now able to group them up, basically meaning like, hey, group them by vendor, group them by item, right? Whatever it may be. Um, so that you don't have to do all of that manually. Previously, it was like, here's everything, go do it yourself. Uh, so now you can just have a bit more control. <clears throat> Next one up here, a suite of improvements to warehouses and locations. So you can now set a preferred bin um, inside of a given item. And then that will actually show up when you're creating your pick list, right? So I can say, hey, it, as we're actually creating this, choose from this bin first, then this one, then this one. Um, so again, this can actually be set at the line item level as we're doing that. I'd imagine here, a lot of this, especially if you're automatically creating these types of pick lists, you can kind of prioritize certain areas that you'd like to uh, pick from first. I will say, being candid, I've played around a bit. You might notice on the channel, we've not done a full tutorial on like the bin management inside of inventory. It's a little bit funky. <laughs> so we're kind of waiting on it to get fully rounded out before we do a full tutorial on it, just so that we don't have to update it immediately thereafter. Um, big one here is in the pick list module, they've now introduced barcode scanning, which is like what people want to do with a pick list, right? So pick list inside of inventory are basically saying for an item or for a hand or for an order, pardon me, or for a handful of orders, give me the total list of everything I need to go and grab before I come back and box it up so that it can go out the door. Definitely like a standard operating procedure in a lot of warehouse operations. Um, one of the challenges has been is that you've never been able to use a scanner as you're doing this, which is really the main way most people do it, right? You go to the bin, the bin has the barcode, you scan it three times, you grab three items, you move on to the next one, right? Like that is how the standard flow is gonna work for actually like how a warehouse functions. So being able to actually scan those it also supports serial item tracking, right? So I can scan particular serial numbers and associate that with the order as well. Um, so that just got a whole lot more useful. It's kind of the short story because um, I'll tell you, like we've bumped into this before where it's like, oh, what do you mean I can't scan the item when I go and get it on my pick list? Like that feels weird. And it's like, yeah, that is kind of weird. But now it's not. Uh, everything has, is going to actually support those barcodes. Uh, custom fields inside a pick list. So if you have, this is specifically for inheriting those fields. So if you had some custom field values inside of a sales order, common example here would be like you've taken a Shopify order number and you've written it to some custom field on that sales order so that you connect it back in the future. Um, those can now get inherited into the pick list that's created from that sales order, right? So just kind of nice for like data management, especially if you pull everything into a reporting tool and want to kind of marry stuff up with Shopify. Uh, you'll be able to do that much more easily given that those custom fields are going to flow in. This could also look like something like priority, right? Like, hey, this is a big customer. This sales order is high priority to get this through our system. Now that would inherit down to the pick list, that could also be flagged as high priority. Last thing on pick list, just a minor one, you've now got audit trail. So if something weird did happen, you can go in and see exactly who made certain changes. Next rounds of updates are around communication. So WhatsApp notifications now going to be supported for packages and shipments. Really nice place for those to, uh, you know, be supported. Like, hey, we're packaging your item. Hey, we've shipped your item, right? It's on its way, right? Pretty standard stuff, but nice to be able to do with WhatsApp. Um, you now can record uh, standalone TDS payments. This is for non-US, so I'm a bit ignorant, but happy to see it exist nonetheless. 
Um, customer and vendor credits can now have an apply date. So this is basically like, hey, I might be creating this today, but I want to backdate when it was applied or I want to post date when it was applied. That can now be done with this apply date field. Um, one nice one here is you can also now associate templates with a specific customer and vendor. This is actually something that I would imagine using in my business. So like our default invoice template is relatively simple. Um, we like to keep it just simple and clean. I've had a client say like, hey, I need my billing address and your billing address on the invoice because it's just like the rule. That's how we do things here. Um, so I could go in, set up that template, and then associate it directly with that customer so that I don't have to remember to do it every time, right? Like that's just one of those errors that you now don't have to make, right? As long as you do it at the customer level appropriately. Um, handful of localization and time or time zone settings. So time zone support uh, for date-based workflows, really nice. So if you do have like a date time field, uh, you can make sure it's actually gonna happen at 8 a.m. in your time zone not 8 a.m. GMT, and then you send an email at midnight on accident, right? Just like something you'd like to avoid. Um, and then a couple extra languages being supported as well. Last section here around some integrations and customization. So additional filters inside of the Shopify integration sync history. Um, really nice here. I'll tell you, sometimes you have to battle this integration a little bit. So being able to go in and filter down the sync history to see more specific things is going to help quite a lot. Um, tax for Shopify orders as well. You can choose whether or not to sync tax remitted Shopify orders. So if you don't, essentially what's going to happen is they're going to take whatever the tax is from Shopify and just bring that in. Uh, this is actually really nice because you'll see weird scenarios where the tax calculates like five cents differently between the two applications sometimes. And you're like chasing your tail and you're like, look, I know it doesn't really matter. I just want them to be the same. Um, you know, we can always true it up at the end of the year. So in that case, you can now just say like, hey, just take it from Shopify. I'm using Avalara over there, whatever it may be. I just want to write that amount in. I don't want to have to recalculate it over and over and then just know that it might be a cent or two off due to like random rounding errors. Um, you can also now have line item discounts when Avalara is enabled. Sneaky one, but a nice one. The way it used to work is you basically have to do a discount off the total if Avalara was turned on. Right now you can do a discount on a line item, which then all gets totaled up. This is kind of nice because you do want to show exactly what you're discounting. Like in my opinion, it's always better to discount at a line item level anyways. And now that's supported even when you have the Avalara integration activated. Uh, customization lookup fields can now be set up to be dynamic, meaning criteria based filtering is supported. So if you didn't want a certain type of item to show up in a lookup field, it doesn't have to now. You could essentially say like, hey, this lookup field is for services only, right? So I'm going to filter that down. And then I don't want anything that's a good to show up when somebody's making that choice. Couple updates here for Android and iOS. Uh, customization of PDFs, unit support, warehouse reporting actually showing up in the application. And then iOS getting quick scan for invoices and bills of supply. So basically using your phone as a scanner for those type of records. Um, so... Overall, kind of a sweet round of updates here for Zoho Inventory. I'd say replenishments is kind of the big one. I think that's something that a lot of people are going to start using pretty darn quickly once they get their hands on it, just because, again, being able to uh, optimize your reordering process is a pretty big deal for like an inventory-centric business. I also am excited about, um, you know, being able to do the dynamic lookup fields and selfishly, just because a lot of our clients do use Avalara, um, having that line item discount is just like the proper way to do that. And it's great to see that it's now supported. With that, I think ready to wrap up here for today. Uh, as always, if you found the video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. That's a totally free way to help us out. Leave a comment with any questions or kind of things you would want to highlight on here that you might think other Zoho nerds will find valuable. Um, and as always, if you'd like any help on your Zoho installation, just head on over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting. We would love to chat. Uh, with that, let's wrap for today. Uh, my name is Tyler Colt and I will see you next time.